All right, welcome to worksheet number 15. This is going to be just a review of counting strategies and expected value and the probability using counting strategy. So like last few sections, we're going to combine it all together. So we'll just go over some um, just examples and I'll do some with you and then I'm going to have you finish the rest of it. All right, let's look at number one. From a deck of cards, you know there are 52 cards in a deck. You're being dealt five card hand, okay. That just means card with five cards or hand. It's just five cards that you get for whatever game we're playing. Uh, here we're gonna assume that the order that we, which we receive the cards doesn't really matter. For example, if you get a king and an ace, that same thing as the uh, ace and a king. So let's just keep that in mind. That means most likely all the questions are gonna be combination type of question. Let's look at number part A. So how many different five cards hands are there? As I said before, the selection, the order of selection does not matter. So here I'm gonna make a little comment. Order of selection doesn't, oops, doesn't matter. That means we're gonna have a combination type of situation. Again, we're selecting five items out of 52 distinct items. So basically I can say 52 C5. Again, it says you don't have to, you can just leave your answer in symbolic form. So I'm going to leave it as a 52 C5. Okay. Let's get part B. How many different hands contain five hearts? So, okay, this is a little different. Part A, the five, uh, five cards can be any cards out of those 52. That's why I wrote is 52 out of five. But it seems like this question, I want to have five hearts. So it's almost like a conditional probability where I'm just going to pick cards, not from 52 cards, but only from hearts. And we know there are 13 hearts. So I'm going to make a comment. There are 13 hearts available to pick from. So instead of, I'm going to say 13 C5, instead of 15 C5 because now I'm picking from only those 13 hearts and I'm going to pick five of those. So how many different ways can I do that? It's 13 C5. So that's the difference between part A and part B. Okay, part C. What is the probability that your hand contains five hearts? So basically, in terms of probability, this is all possible five card hands and this is uh, hands I want. So there are this many out of this total possibilities so basically my answer is 13 c5 over 52 c5 so like if i'm doing five hand five car hands question basically my sample space is going to be this number this is every single possible hands i can possibly get and this is the one that i want this particular case is five hearts right um i'm gonna have you try part d e they're similar uh I'm going to have you pause, work on D and E. After you're done, let's get part F. There's one extra twist for part F. It says, how many different hands contain three face cards and two aces, right? So, okay, so they're like this and that. So let's look at the first part again. Uh, first, three face cards. Again, uh, how many different ways can I get there? 12 face cards total. So 12 C3, and then it says, and two aces. So this is gonna be just basic counting rule. I'm making this first set of selections, and I'm gonna make second set of selections. Total number of uh, ways I can do those is basically I multiply those two. Second part, I'm gonna pick two aces. Again, there are four aces uh, available. I'm gonna pick two out of those four. So it'll be four C2. So, for part, for previous question, when I want five hearts, it was just 13 C5 because there are 13 hearts and five cards, that's it. Here, what do I have to do it this way? Because I want certain cards and some other cards. Okay, so how do I get this part? It's 12 face cards, three out of those, and then two aces out of four possible aces. And you multiply those two according to the basic counting rule. So this is total number of hands I can get having three face uh, cards and two aces. So kind of same for the next one, part G. What is the probability that your hand contains three face cards and two aces? So it just follows from part F, 12, oops, 
12c3 times 4c2 over 52c5, right? Again, I'm using this one as my sample space, and this is all the hands I want to possibly get. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna have you finish the rest of number one. I think you can try number two also. So once you're done with num the rest of number one and number two, then we'll look at number three. So number three is a game is offered to play. You pick two cards from deck of cards. If you pick two cards, two black cards, you win $10. Otherwise you lose two. Okay, so it's a gambling. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Question is mathematically, is it a good game to play? Explain why or why not? So to determine if a game is a good game or not, we have to look at expected value, so we need to calculate expected value. We need to calculate the expected value because expected value gives you like overall average amount you win or lose. Again, we cannot just look at one game and see if it's a good game or not. In order to determine if the game is good or not is by looking at the expected value, which gives you like an average of winning if you were to play this many, many times. Okay, so in order to ex find the expected value first, I want to make a little table that has all the winning amount, losing amount, and the probable corresponding probability. So winning or losing, and then probability. So it says that I could win $10 by picking two black cards, so I can win $10. And then otherwise I lose $2. Okay, fine, negative 2. Now, how do I calculate the probability of winning $10? So I need to find this probability. In order to win $10, I have to pick two black cards. So this is kind of similar to number one. Number one, we drew five, we received five cards. Here I'm doing just two cards. So sample space is gonna be, sample space is, has, is gonna have 52C2. So instead of 52C5 as number one, here we have 52C2. Uh, the event that I win $10, I need to have two black cards. So two black cards. Uh, it's going to be toward 26 black cards. And I want to pick two of those. Okay. So this probability is going to be 26C2 over 52C2. This one for calculation or purpose, I actually need to calculate this out. So I'll use my calculator 26C2, get the answer, divide by 52C2. If I calculate it out, I got 0.245. Okay. And then the next one is losing $2. When, do I, when does that happen? Anything else? If you get only one black or no black cards, you lose $2. Here, I can calculate it directly, but here I'm looking at this. This is about 25%. Everything has to add up to 100%. So I can kind of use shortcut and say, can I just do one minus 0.245? So I can get 0.755 because they're a complement event, okay? So how do I calculate the expected value? I just multiply these two because I'm multiplying the winning amount by its corresponding probability. So 10 times 0.245, negative two times 0.755. So I'm gonna write that out. So expected value, is gonna be 10 times 0.245 plus negative two times 0.755. I'm gonna calculate it out, I get 0.94. Oh, so that's a positive number. So what that means is on average, you uh, overall you're gonna win 94 cents per game. Again, sometimes you're gonna win, sometimes you're gonna lose, but if you average them out in long term, you're gonna be having 0.94 as a expected value, which is average. So it's a good game. Expe expected value is positive. All right, let's look at the next question. Bunch of password questions here. Let's look at part A, account A. The password needs to be eight characters, six lowercase letters, and two digits. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then two digits. Again, we're using basic counting rule. I'm picking, I have to select the first letter, then I'm gonna pick the second letter and the third letter, so on and so forth. So I'm doing a bunch of, it's a multi-stage experiment. So it says first six letters, uh, lowercase letters. 
So the first one, I have 26 choices. It doesn't say anything about repeat or not repeat, so I'm going to assume the repeat is allowed. So the second one is going to be still 26, right? And then so on and so forth, 26, 26. These are all my letters. And then they say last two are digits, so I have 10 digits. Again, I'm just, I can just leave it as it is. So it'd be, if you want to be fancy, 26 to the 6th power times 10 to the square. That's my answer here. Let me do one more. Uh, let's do part C. Password needs to be five characters, five lower five lowercase letters, no repeats allowed. So one, two, three, four, five. So the first letter can be anything A through Z, 26 choices. However, the next one, because it says repeats are not allowed, I could be like, oh, don't I just cannot not, if I were to use Z for my first letter, then I cannot use Z anymore. So then I only have 25 choices left. So it'd be 26 times 25 and then so on and so forth. The next letter, I can only have 24 choices because whatever letters I use for the first two, I cannot use that anymore because it says no repeats. And then 22. Okay. I could have said alternate answer. <laughs> answer here. So this is my answer, which is fine. Alternate answer is like repeats are not allowed. I'm picking five characters, five letters out of 26 and I'm going to arrange it a certain way. So that sounds like permutation. So I could have done 26P5. It gives you the same answer, basically. All right, now I'm going to have you try 5 and 6, the rest of it. Let's see. How about number 8? Let's see if I can go over that with you here. Um, there are 53 Republican senators and 47 Democrats, and they want to find a committee want to figure out different ways we can form committees. Uh, part A, the Student Success Committee, needs three members, any party members. Uh, it says members have no specific roles. So if I pick person A, B, C versus person B, A, C. Here, I'm trying to see if this is going to be combination type of question or permutation type of question. But they say there's no specific role here, no specific roles. So if I pick A, B, C versus B, A, C, they don't have any particular roles. So it seems like they're the same group. There's three same exact people. So I feel like this is going to be combination type of question. So here I'm going to say 100 C3. Again, I use C because this is a combination type of question. Out of 100 senators, I'm picking three. They said that any party members can be on it. So it doesn't matter. Part B. The workforce committee needs three members from each party, so six members total. Members have no specific role. So first three are Republicans and the last three are Democrats. So I'm gonna have to go like this, 53C3. So this is how many ways I can put three Republicans and so times 47C3. So first three people have to come from this particular group and the next three people have to come from this particular group. So this is basically the same as like picking cards, like I need three hearts from here and then three face cards from here. I need three Republicans from here. I need three Democrats from here. So it's kind of same question, but instead of cards, now we have Democrats and Republicans. Let's look at part C. The scholarship committee needs four members. Any party members can be in the committee. They should have a chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. So this is gonna be a little different than part A because now they have a specific role. So for example, if I pick A, B, C, D versus B, A, C, D, now it seems like A is the chair, B is the vice chair for this selection. But if I look at this selection, it sounds like B is the chair now and A is the vice chair. Well, there are two different, now we have two different chairmen, right? So now these selection and this selection, this selection and this selection, they're gonna be different selection. That means it's permutation where it matters in what order these committee members are selected. So here my answer is going to be 100 P4. Okay, I think I kind of went over some typical questions here. So I'm going to have you finish the rest of it. And that's it for this worksheet.